The protected waters of the Salish Sea are nestled into the mountains and islands of North America's Pacific shore. The Salish Sea stretches across the international border from just north of Campbell River, British Columbia, south to Olympia, Washington. The sea has been home to the Coast Salish peoples for millennia, and today almost nine million people live around its shores. The sea is made up of three great arms, the Strait of Georgia in the north, Puget Sound in the south, and the Strait of Juan de Fuca that connects the other two to the open Pacific Ocean. What I've learned from scientists is that the Salish Sea is a giant mixing bowl where currents bring together nutrients from rivers and nutrients from the deep offshore Pacific and these are stirred together by tidal currents into one body of life-giving waters. And that this large-scale circulation of ocean currents and all that they carry connects the Salish Sea together into a single giant ecosystem, a single body of life. It's truly extraordinary that these currents connect together the myriad of organisms and habitats across the web of life in the Salish Sea. And when I run into complex ideas like this, I look for a comparison to something simpler to help me visualize the way it works. And recently, that's exactly what happened. I came upon a different type of map of the Salish Sea one that rotates the orientation of the sea so that north is to the left. And when I view the Salish Sea on its side, I immediately see something that I'd missed before. The Salish Sea has the shape of a windswept tree. In my imagination, the Strait of Juan de Fuca is the tree's inclined trunk. Puget Sound is a stunted crown pruned short by the wind. And the Strait of Georgia is a long leeward trail of branches. Victoria hugs the top of the trunk. Vancouver, Seattle, and Tacoma are perched above the wind-pruned branches. And Campbell River lies at the end of the windswept tree. I mention this idea to some friends, and they point me to a nearby tree shaped surprisingly like that of the Salish Sea. As I admire the tree, ideas spark, and I realize that the sea and the tree have some interesting things in common. Both straddle a boundary. The Salish Sea sits where mountains meet ocean, while the tree straddles atmosphere and earth, with branches in the air and roots in the soil. <laughs> then another similarity jumps to mind. Both Salish Sea and tree draw nutrients from both sides of the boundary they straddle. For the Salish Sea, nutrients flow in from both rivers off the mountains and currents from the open ocean while a tree draws carbon dioxide and sunlight from the atmosphere, as well as water and nutrients from the soil. <laughs> and this is getting really interesting, as I realize that both the Salish Sea and a tree have a circulation system that spreads the nutrients around. In the Salish Sea, currents driven by both rivers and tides carry nutrients to all parts of the Salish Sea, fueling growth in every corner. Similarly, the sap of a tree circulates sugars and water to all parts of the tree, fueling growth everywhere. This comparison really intrigues me. It suggests that the Salish Sea functions in some ways like a single living organism, a tree. Like a tree, the Salish Sea bridges two worlds, drawing nutrients from each, and like a tree's sap, circulates those nutrients with currents and therefore supports life in every corner. And that's a key reason why the Salish Sea succeeds as well as it does. Its ocean currents connect together the entire Salish Sea and provide precious nutrients that are the foundation of the marine food web. 
nurturing all the life that knows the Salish Sea as home. <laughs>